and talking it over and realizing that you see our videos, the videos that and I make together, sometimes they're cooking videos and sometimes they're hands-on art videos, but you don't have any sense of where we work or what our life is like uh, as we get set up for those kinds of videos that we're shooting. So we decided that we'd do kind of an impromptu studio visit. So that's what you're looking at here. You're looking at the, uh, at the outside of my studio and this mural is there because when the building was first put the siding on, it was tagged with graffiti. And when it was tagged with graffiti, it seemed to me, why, uh, why fight them when you can join them, right? Because I love, I love some kinds of graffiti. So I went downtown to a shop that sells spray paint and I told these guys I had this wall and they could put anything they wanted on the wall and I would pay for And I said, what would you charge me? And they said, you just pay for the paint. So that was cool. I paid $300 for the paint. And this is what I got. <laughs> it's a little faded now, and I've never been quite sure who that girl is. But somebody said they thought that the guys who painted it had me in mind. And if they do, I guess I should be flattered, because she has a gorgeous long neck. But in any event, come on, let's go in the building and take a look at the studio. So this is the wet studio and this was built in 2012 and it's where all the magic happens and then we'll take a look at the house and in the downstairs of the house is where we make our lunches and we can do critique sessions and you'll see what it's like but come on in here right now. Sorry dogs. This is the welcoming committee. So this is my dream space. And we have, over on the left, we have pin-up boards. And if we just take a walk here through the studio, when I have classes here, this is all set up with individual tables for the students. But right now I'm between class sessions, so I've got my own stuff laid out. So I've been playing around with paint, and we're uh, getting ready to print some more fabrics for the collector's edition of the improvisational screen printing book. And this is my latest love, all this botanical stuff. So I'm waiting to get back into that. And actually, we're gonna film a little bit about that today. And then I've been working with these vintage textiles to make um, wheat peel tops. And I don't have one with me. You might have seen one in one of the videos. I think I was wearing one. So there's a lot going on. This is where we do all the photography. And so you see a couple of my pieces that are going out to shows on the wall here behind me. And this is my pride and joy. Well, I should say Zen is my pride and joy, but this is my pride and joy. This table is 16 feet long, so I can ob obviously print a lot of yardage here. And it was designed so that we could put these rolling racks underneath um, in order to leave all the wall space free. So I love this table, and it slides, it's on the slider, so once a year, we slide the big table clear over into that part of the studio, and we empty this whole room out, and we turn it into a gallery, and it makes a fabulous gallery. So it's a, it's a wonderful space. I'm glad I had to design spaces for a bunch of other places before it was time to design my own, because then I could learn from everything that I'd, I'd learned from doing this kind of a thing for other people. So over here, On this side of the room, we have the, the truly the wet area. So we have a three compartment restaurant sink, and we have smaller sinks over here by the washer and dryer. And um, we have a bullet steamer. And I have some other steaming pots out. We have an electric stove, and since I've really been in the botanical printing mode, I've been using that stove and I've been using this burner and also sometimes the vertical steamer in order to figure out the best setup for classes. We've got the washer and the dryer and we have a bathroom in here too. And we've got my funky artwork on the bathroom wall there. Because the studio was so pristine and pure that it was making me a little crazy. This was before anything was moved in. And I thought, well, I'm just going to paint that cube in some really colorful, bright way. And I got up on a ladder so I could start painting that top up there, and the can of paint tipped off and fell on the floor upside down. And I thought, oh, no, no, you know, I mean, it was still totally brand new space. 
But then I realized better for me to screw it up the first time than for it to be a student, right? It couldn't be that precious, it's a studio. So then I, I was able to go a little bit freer with the paintings on the wall. And, and then I found these in, um, oh, so in some small town in Colorado and I, in a coffee shop and I just, I love them. So that's the inspiration over here and let's see. I think that pretty much covers the wet studio. You get another sense of it from over here. When we've got 12 students in here, which is the maximum that I take, it's a really hopping spot and really, really fun. Oh, I forgot about one more thing I wanna show you before we leave the studio, because if you do a lot of dyeing, you need a spinner, and I don't get paid for this. So here's my spinner. And, uh, Emma. So, the way this works, it's such a simple gadget. You put the dyed fabric that's been just rinsed partially, you put it down in the spinner and you close the lid. And when you close the lid, it starts spinning it really, really, really fast, which is why it's called a spinner, right? And you put a, a bucket down here and all the moisture that's left in the fabric runs into the bucket and you can pour it out. And the fabric comes out, um, not dry, obviously, but it's such an effective way to get the extra water out of dyed fabric. So if you don't have one, you might consider it. And around $100, so they're not real expensive either. And it's kind of like having your own little robot. Now let's go in the house. Hey, Hi. Where are you Yeah, I know you are. You're right. So this is the kitchen. It's pretty basic, but I like having a kitchen on the premises because it means we can have coffee set up and we can do lunches. A lot of the time when we have workshops, we do a communal lunch and put out kind of a salad bar here. There's a fridge so people can bring their, their own lunches if they want to, and we've got a dishwasher, which is a real luxury in a studio. A uh, gas stove. A lot of the time when I have classes that are week long, we have a Thursday night meal here. And that sort of sense of community and the communal ability to enjoy meals together in addition to being in the studio is its really important to me. And so this part of the house, in, in its own funny way, is equally as important as anything that's happening in the wet studio during the day. It's kind of right in here right now, but I just wanted to point out the backsplash. I don't know whether you can get a shot of that, Zena. But it's a, it's a treated sheet metal that was rusted and it was made by my friend Aggie Eister, and she gave it to me as a, uh, a welcoming gift after I bought the house and we were redoing all these rooms. And she has since passed, so it's even more meaningful to me to, to have that here, along with hearts and all kinds of bits of artwork that people have given me over the uh, years that I've been here, which is, shoot, now I'm going on seven. Let's walk through the rest of the house. This is our office area where Wayne Harms ships all the orders and makes his magic happen. And we've got the photocopier and the thermofax machine and it's a small space but it's kind of the hub of activity a lot of the time, especially when classes aren't happening. And this is the dining room and long enough table that we can get 12 or 14 around the table, which is usually about the max that we would have with most workshops, but nice to be able to sit down and unwind at the end of the workshop day. And this is the living room, which also serves because of these pinup walls here off to the right. This also serves as the space where we do critiques. When I have an independent study, we start in this room and we all sit and look at the work that people have brought to share, uh, talk about what their goals are, and that's usually how I like to start my workshops, is getting into a setting where everybody can sit down face to face and, and figure out you know, who we are and what we're gonna do over the course of the week. And sometimes people know each other and they've been here before, sometimes they don't. But in any event, um, these are pretty important rooms. This is, uh, this is where the connecting happens. In the studio, everybody's kind of at their own table. 
or over a dye bucket working on their own things. But when they're in here, then we really have a sense of how we're supporting and connecting with each other. And, and as I said earlier in the kitchen, that part's as important to me as anything else we're making. So, so that's pretty much wrap, wraps up what we have and gives you more of a sense of when you see me in a particular background, um, you'll know sort of where we are. Um, I suppose we can throw in a tour of my house sometime um, in another video because sometimes we film over there too. We, we have a wealth of beautiful opportunities, but this is a great space. It has a wonderful atmosphere. People comment on the positive energy here all the time. So if you ever have a chance to get to come here and work with me, I would welcome that and I think you would be delighted. <laughs>